Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Chemistry Show. My name is Cindy. I will be your host this afternoon, and I would just like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish people today here at Science World. Now, I know that we are here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, um, but you could be joining us from all over the place. So what we have is we have an awesome chat and we have someone moderating that chat right now with us today. So if you want to share any thoughts, any comments throughout the show, uh, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, right now, I just wanted to ask everyone where you are watching from. If you want to share where you're watching from, which part of the country, the city, the world you're watching from, feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, and then we will see where people are coming from today. Um, like I said, my name is Cindy. I will be your host today, but we also have an awesome awesome team with us today who is making this who are making this live stream possible so we got stefano on the camera we got ashley on the chat and we got jeff doing all the other controls that are very very complicated and beyond me um, so thank you so much folks for coming uh, and helping us make this happen um, one thing i did want to mention before we get this show started is that this is the Chemistry Show. And The Chemistry Show is a very, very special show because we are working with a lot of chemicals today. And these chemicals aren't something that uh, <laughs> that can be played with, basically. Um, these chemicals are very, very serious chemicals. So we are making sure that we are wearing our personal protective equipment. Um, I've got my face shield uh, with me just because there are other people in the building with me today. Um, I've also got my goggles and my glasses underneath. Um, so I might look like a little bit of a nerd, but I am safe. And you know what? Honestly, the world probably needs more nerds. Um, we, so throughout this show, we will want to show you some chemistry that you might be able to do at home. There are a couple things that we're hoping to show you, um, but just be mindful that if you are gonna try any of these activities at home, the chemicals are not toys. We don't wanna be mixing any chemicals together that we don't know what they are. And we also wanna be making sure that we are doing these activities with a trusted adult. I, for one, am a trained adult. I've been trained to do all of these activities. Um, so that is why I am able to do them today. So now that that's out of the way, let us get started on our chemistry show. This is one of my favorite shows here at Science World, honestly, and it is so, so fun because for so long when I was younger, I thought that chemistry was something that was completely unattainable to me. I thought that only chemists do it in their labs and I could never do chemistry. But then I learned that chemistry is everywhere. It's all around us because chemistry is really just the study of these teeny tiny atoms and teeny tiny molecules that make up everything around us. And since these atoms and molecules make up everything around us, then chemistry is all around us. But it's the job of a chemist to study these atoms and molecules and the way they behave and the way they interact. And sometimes that can be hard to just look at with our eyes. It can be hard to see. Um, so it's the job of these chemists to use other chemicals to create reactions and to look for clues of a chemical reaction and also to study, use other tools to study the properties of different chemicals. And our first demonstration that we're going to do is uh, going to highlight a tool that we can use to study the property of chemicals because I have these two chemicals in front of me. As you can see, they look very chemically, and they are actually both a clear liquid. So this one's a clear liquid, this one's a clear liquid, and honestly, I can't really tell the difference between them, but they are actually two different substances. One is an acid, and one is a base. And these are kind of common chemicals, uh, very common categories that chemists will put chemicals, in, uh, chemists will put chemicals in. Um, 
So, and they have very specific properties. Acids are things, for example, like lemon juice, vinegar, they're often sour, um, and they're often kind of, they kind of sting if you put them on your skin. Um, bases, on the other hand, are things like cleaning products, bleach, soap, and these things have kind of a slimy, slippery feeling if you put them on your skin, but you shouldn't be touching any chemicals or letting them come into contact with your skin. Um, and they also kind of have a bitter taste, but we also shouldn't be tasting any chemicals. Um, and the, they have very different properties. And I have an acid and a base in front of me, but you know what? I actually poured them out of a, other containers and I forgot, I didn't get a chance to label them in these flasks. So I don't really know which is which because they look so similar. However, I do have a tool that can actually help me tell the difference between an acid and a base. I have some, this tiny little flask of this kind of greenish, bluish liquid in here. And this is an indicator. This is an indicator called bromothymol blue. And indicators are very, very, very cool chemicals that help us tell the difference between acids and bases by changing color when it comes in contact with either one. So bromothymol blue is interesting because it'll change color it'll turn yellow when it comes in contact with an acid. Um, so I think the best thing we can do now is we can actually just use our bromothymol blue, test these chemicals, and see which one's an acid and which one's a base. So we will start with this one right here, and we'll pour our bromothymol blue into it. Ooh, very interesting. So you can see that it turned from that green just this kind of blue color. It's very, very pretty. All right, so that's this chemical it turned blue. So let's see what happens to this clear liquid we have here. And, ooh, very, very interesting. Now that isn't blue, that's yellow. So that's so interesting. We were able to use our bromothymol blue to learn about the properties of these chemicals. We saw that this turned yellow, so this is an acid, and this is actually vinegar, I believe, and we saw that this turned blue, so this is a base, um, and I believe this is uh, baking soda that's been mixed with water. Very, very interesting. Um, and the interesting thing about chemistry is that chemistry can actually intersect with so many different fields. It intersects with biology often, and actually we have something right here. This is just something I brought from home, but this is a spice called turmeric. This is a common household spice, and it can actually be grown in your garden. Um, but we can actually do some really interesting chemistry with this turmeric, and I think Brian at home has something really, really cool that he wants to show you. Let's take it away to Brian. Hey folks, it's Brian from Science World, and I'm going to be using turmeric as an indicator. I've actually taken a white cloth and I've dyed it with turmeric using hot water, and I'm going to put it in this solution. Now, an indicator changes color when it's introduced to either an acid or a base, but turmeric will only change color if it's introduced to a basic solution. So right over here, I've dunked it inside this baking soda and water solution. I'm gonna try to make sure it gets mixed up real good because I did say that it should change color when it's introduced to a basic solution. Now, as I scroll this around, I notice, because I'm so used to looking at this yellow uh, cloth, that it's actually changed color. It's not really as yellow as it used to be. It's orange now. So it changed color when it was put inside this basic solution because turmeric changes color when it is uh, put into basic solutions. But right over here, I've got some vinegar and I wanna show you what color it used to look like in case you can't remember. So if I dunk this into my vinegar, it actually will neutralize and uh, sort of makes it look like it's reverting that effect. But really, I'm just gonna be neutralizing the cloth that's inside vinegar, this acid, so that when I lift it back up, you should be able to see that original yellow color. So at the very top, it's definitely that orangey red from before. Whoa! 
you can definitely see that this yellow part's now neutralized. Uh, I'm gonna have to flip it over and neutralize the rest of them when I wash it. I can put it away and still use this turmeric cloth as an indicator for basic solutions. Well, folks, thanks for watching. If you have any fun demonstrations that you want to share with Science World, put the hashtag show us your science in your social media posts so that we can see it as well. Thanks very much, folks. Welcome back, everyone. Brian, that was so awesome. That was an activity to die for. All right. So um, before we move on with our show, I just want to throw it out to Ashley. Ashley, uh, is anyone g g coming, watching from anywhere? Oh my God, I am actually from Toronto. So shout out to Toronto, that's a great city. Port Coquitlam, awesome. Hi, Marissa from Port Coquitlam, that's so cool. We have one more or no? Tegan and Kira from Surrey. Hello, Tegan and Kira from Surrey. It's really, thank you so much for watching. All right, that's awesome. And we actually have these two chemicals. And I was thinking, we have these two chemicals that are these two different colors now, but I wonder what's gonna happen if we mix them together. Hmm, that's kind of an interesting thought. Um, let's throw it in the chat. If I mix them together. If, does anyone have any ideas for what might happen? If you do, please put it in the chat. And honestly, if you just want to see me mix them together, go ahead and hit one of those reaction buttons. So uh, I know that this is something that people want to see. Um, because like I said here, this is a acid, so this is vinegar, and this is a base, baking soda. And these are both chemicals that you can find in your household oftentimes. Um, and they do really, really interesting things in our households, and they do really, really interesting things when they're mixed together. Ashley, does anyone want to see them mixed together? Everyone! Everyone! Okay, then let's do it. Okay, let's pour our acid into our flask. It's our vinegar. And let's add some base. Ooh, I hope this was a good idea. Whoa! That was so interesting! So it looks like that when we mix them together, they actually bubbled and fizzed, and our chemical turned this kind of greenish color that's very similar to our original bromothymol blue. Ashley, did anyone have any predictions in the chat of what might happen? No one thought it would go green, but lots of people thought it would turn green. Oh, lots of people thought it would turn green. Well, you were right. It actually did turn green green and it bubbled and fizzed, which is actually a really, really interesting uh, reaction because that's what we're going to talk about next is other things that we can look for when we're looking for chemical reactions. Um, so I have our next demonstration, which is one of my favorite, favorite demonstrations in the chemistry show because we get to see lots of bubbling, lots of fizzing. Um, this demonstration is involves a household chemical, something that you might have in your home, uh, and that something is called hydrogen peroxide. Now, you might have heard of hydrogen peroxide before. It's a common cleaning uh, chemical, um, and we have it right here. Now, hydrogen peroxide is really interesting because its chemical formula is H2 O2. Now, that might seem a little familiar to, to you, H2O2, because it's very, very similar to the chemical formula of water, which is H2O. And hydrogen peroxide does something that's really interesting uh, in that it will actually react with the oxygen in the air around us. So I've poured it into this Erlenmeyer flask. And stuff. Now, why don't you zoom in a little? Because right now, our hydrogen peroxide is actually reacting. Can anyone see it reacting? Stuff uh, even closer. We we have to see this react. Can anyone see it reacting? Ooh, no. Did you just shake the camera? No, Stefano. Ah, okay. Well, it looks like. It's pretty hard to see this reaction because what is happening is our hydrogen peroxide is reacting with the air and it's decomposing into two elements. It's decomposing into H2O, 
water, and O2. But like I said, it's not super, super easy to see, but what we can do is we can add something called a catalyst. And the catalyst allows us to help see our chemical reactions a little easier. And when we're looking at chemical reactions, when chemists are looking at chemical reactions, um, they're looking at three things. We usually have three clues to show if a chemical reaction is happening. The first one is um, that something new is being made. So when you're watching this reaction happen, make sure you keep an eye out for something new being made. They also oftentimes look for a change in color. So that's something that we actually saw with our acids and bases. We saw a change in color. Um, and the last thing that they're looking for is a change in energy. And that's kind of a little vague, but usually what it means is that a, uh, there's a change in temperature. So it gets hotter or it gets colder. So those are things I want you to keep an eye out for when, you, when this chemical reaction happens. And this is very important because we need a lot of eyes on this chemical reaction for everyone to see it because it's gonna be really hard to see. We just saw it was really hard to see, might still be kind of hard to see. So we need a lot of eyes. And if you see any of those three clues that a chemical reaction is happening, make sure you hit that reaction button. Okay, so Ashley, Stefano, are we ready? Okay, we are ready. We have our catalyst. This is something called potassium iodide. Just makes our reaction go a little faster so we can see it a little better. And in three, two, one. See, now this reaction, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times I, whoa, often don't, whoa! Oh my goodness. Okay, it's probably gonna stop now. It's, 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 it's big. Oh my goodness. This is a big reaction that's happening. Ashley, did anyone hit any of those reaction buttons when they saw the reaction happening? Yeah, lots of people. Oh my God, okay, yeah, I saw a reaction happening as well. That is so cool. Uh, a lot of things that we can see with this chemical reaction, we saw some new stuff being made. I certainly saw a lot of new stuff being made. We also saw a bit of a color change, which was very, very cool. It went from kind of a clear fluid to brown. And another thing that we saw was, or at least I saw, um, was that there was a little bit of heat being generated in this chemical reaction. There's a little bit of heat coming off of it, and I can feel it with my hands right now. I'm putting my hands close to it, but it might be a little hard to see uh, from home, which is fine because we actually have something to show us the way that heat can be generated in a chemical reaction. Now, this is called an exothermic reaction that we're about to create right here, and that means it's creating heat, so it's getting warmer. And what I have here are these lovely little hand warmers that I love using in the winter when my hands get super cold. Um, but these lovely hand warmers actually work in a super, super cool way. Because the way that these hand warmers work is we are going to warm our hands by bringing the solution inside this hand warmer, the liquid, to its freezing point. What? Let me say that again. We are going to warm our hands by bringing the solution in this hand warmer to its freezing point. Hmm. Now that's a little confusing, and I'm a little confused by that. But actually, it's something that's really, really interesting because there is a very special chemical in this hand warmer called sodium acetate, and it's mixed with water. Um, and inside here is actually something very specific. It's a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Now that's a tongue twister to try at home. Maybe Ashley, you can put that in the chat for people to practice at home. Um, but a super saturated solution of sodium acetate basically means that this liquid has been cooled down past its freezing point because like how water's freezing point is zero degrees Celsius, 
So the amacetate's freezing point is actually 54 degrees Celsius. So it's actually much warmer than room temperature, but it's very, very stable right now, which means that it can actually exist in its liquid form below its freezing point quite quite well until we create something called a nucleation site and then it gets really warm but it's hard to see that at home if i'm just doing it from this stage so i think brian at home actually has a really really cool way to visualize this so brian why don't i let you take it away Oh, where did it go? There's a little metal tab in here that's hard to find, but once I snap that metal tab back, it's actually going to create a nucleation site and it's going to allow that crystallization process to happen. So follow me right over here. We've actually got an infrared camera that's also going to show this process. I'm going to snap this tab back in three, two, one. I can see those crystals being formed and I hope that the infrared camera is picking it up. Oh my goodness, it is. It looks amazing. Now, this is, woo, that's so much warmer now. This is gonna warm my hands. Mm, it's perfect. And guess what? If you thought this was really cool, well, show us your science from home too. I showed you mine. Show us your science. Uh, when you have any cool demonstrations that you'd like to put up on social media, put the hashtag, show us your science in the video description so that we can see it as well. Thanks very much folks. <laughs> awesome Brian that is so cool and now we have a nice warm hand warmer to warm our hands. Okay Ashley is there anyone else in the chat who is coming from anywhere cool? Loki from Victoria. Hi, Loki. Thank you so much for tuning in on the show. That is so, so awesome that you're watching. Okay, awesome. So now that we have talked about all the different ways that we can look for clues that a chemical reaction is happening, it is time for our final demonstration. Now, our final demonstration is by far one of the most fun demonstrations at Science World, we are going to be setting off our bang cannon. But before we set off our bang cannon, I actually really did want to talk to everyone about Science World as an organization um, in the past couple months. Uh, obviously, Science World has been closed for the past four-ish months. Um, but even though the dome is closed, we are all still very, very hard at work. However, the loss of our main revenue stream has actually created a bit of a financial crisis for our organization. Um, so what I'm asking is if you can, you can fund the future by donating today to scienceworld.ca slash donate so we can continue to ignite wonder and empower dreams uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much, so much for watching though. I really, really appreciate it. And you know, with no further ado, let's move on to our final demonstration. Let us create a bang cannon. Well, we have the bang cannon. We're creating the bang. All right. So we have our Science World bang cannon right here in front of me. This piece of equipment is actually very, very interesting because it actually used to be, a, it's a very, very old children's toy from you know, a time before class action lawsuits existed. But what we are going to do is it works using chemistry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get a piece of protective equipment that I've forgotten my other table here. Oh, there it is. We need our ear protection for this because it's gonna be very loud. Um, because what this bang cannon does is it actually uses something called calcium carbide or it's otherwise known as bang site it's just this black powder that i'm going to load into our piece of equipment here there we go and calcium carbide is a very very interesting chemical Ooh, because it reacts with water and it reacts with water to form something called acetylene gas so i'm going to make sure there's some water in here I'm just gonna load that up with our calcium carbide. Nope, haven't used this in a couple months. Alrighty, there we go. So it reacts with water to form a gas called acetylene 
gas. And acetylene gas is very, very interesting because it is very, very flammable. And what that means is that it catches on fire super easily. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set it on fire. Um, so like I said, this is going to be our final demonstration today. I will be sticking around for a couple minutes after our um, final demonstration to answer some questions. Um, and this is a very, very loud demonstration. So I would encourage you I have my ear protection here with me, if, if I didn't have enough personal protective equipment on already. Um, but I got some ear protection here, and uh, I would encourage you, if you don't like loud sounds, or if you have, you know, sleeping animals, sleeping dogs that spook easily around, um, just turning those speakers down a little bit, because it does get quite loud. Uh, let's just put this away, and pop this in. And Ashley, Stefano, are we ready? Okay, and we will do a countdown if everyone wants to count down in the chat with me. We are going to set off our bang cannon in five, four, three, two, one. Bang. Oh no, what is happening? Looks like our bang cannon doesn't want to bang today. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> we got to load up our calcium carbide first before we, before we create our bang. So let's let that load up for a second. Let's put load our little igniter back in. All right, let's try this one more time in five. Four, three, two, one, ear protectors on, and bang! That's what I'm talking about. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. That was the chemistry show. My name is Cindy. We're at Science World. Um, please feel free to tune in next week for our next live stream. Um, and if you want to learn more about any of these demonstrations at home, uh, scienceworld.ca slash resources is an awesome place to go because we got lots of great, great material. All right, I'll be sticking around for a couple minutes for questions. Um, otherwise, thank you so much and have a lovely Wednesday, everyone. Bye. Okay, do we have any questions, Ashley? Wow, that is a really, really great question, Tegan and Kira, because we actually have a neutral solution right here. So this is the solution that we made by mixing that vinegar and baking soda together. And the interesting thing is vinegar and baking soda will neutralize each other. So when we mix them together, they actually create a neutral solution. And it's kind of that green color that the bromothymol blue came in, but it's a little uh, more diluted, so it's not super dark. Um, but yeah, this is the color of a neutral solution. When is the next show? That is a great question, Nina. It is next week, Wednesday, next Wednesday at 2.20, and we'll be doing them every Wednesday at 2.20. And also, you know what, Avnita, we got so many, we've been doing these all summer, so we got a really, really awesome archive of our old live streams every week leading up to now um, on our Facebook page and on YouTube. So if you're looking for something to uh, check out, feel free to check those out as well. What is your favorite demonstration? What is my favorite demonstration ever? That is a very, very, very good question. Um, I think my favorite demonstration in this show is the elephant toothpaste. And other shows, I'm going to have to think about a little bit. Nice? Oh, that is, that is a really good question. My favorite fun fact about myself is that I really, really enjoy gardening. So I like to spend a lot of time outside, a lot of time in the garden, and a lot of time growing food um, kind of 
in my home or at Science World in our science park, um, and also, you know, anywhere I can. Yeah, Stefano. Oh, that is a, that's a good question. It, I have been working in Science World now since November 2018, so that is about a year and a half, a little more than a year and a half. Um, and it took me at least three months, two months, I think, to learn my first show. Um, and I've been learning shows ever since, so it's an, it's an ongoing process. Okay, awesome. Do we have any other questions, Ashley? Or we're, we are good. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing this show for you. And have a great day, everyone. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.